Hello and welcome back to another Formable Nations video. Today we're going to be addressing the third of the traditional Formable Nations that were added with no step back. We've done the Idle Ural, we've done Siberia, so now it's time for us to tackle the mountainous republic of the Northern Caucasus. Let's begin. So as is with all of the five nations that they've added, which you can create as formable nations, they all require you to start as the Soviet Union if you want to play as them in Iron Man. Since we've already covered it before, I'm probably just going to flip through what you have to do and catch you up where we're going to meet up later. So, if you want to form the Mountainous Republic, you're going to have to go down the path of Marxist-Leninism, take the left opposition, go for a civil war, win a civil war, move down the Soviet focus tree, which you have now unlocked, um, probably with Trotsky, but it's going to be down the Trotskyist path, all the way down to autonomous Soviet republics. It is once you get to autonomous Soviet republics that there's some key things you're going to have to do before you can form the nation. The first thing you're going to have to do is know what the nation is. So, the North Caucasus is a sort of a pseudo, very short-lived state, that existed in the North Caucasus, as the name would suggest, sometime around the end of the Russian Empire, but was very quickly re-annexed by the Soviet Union. From left to right, with poor pronunciation, the countries that it uh, is comprised of is Abkhazia, Kabardino, North Ossetia, Chechnya, and Dagestan. The only method you have to form it is following in the footsteps of the Siberia video I made, which you are free to check out, so I won't be covering it too quickly, but the basis is as follows. You're going to have to release one of these nations, play as them, and then capitulate the Soviet Union, which is just about as difficult as it sounds. For starters, you're going to have to delete the entire Soviet army, including every bit of their equipment. All of it. Even the stuff that's stockpiled. Next up, you're going to have to make sure that the Soviet Union doesn't have any factories, and that means going around and finding out where all the factories are. Luckily, you've got the convert tool, which should tell you that anywhere you can uh, see a convert military factory to civilian factory, that's where a mill is. You have to delete it. But you should probably delete every factory just to be on the safe side. Oh, what fun this is. All right, that's about as crippled as it's gonna get with 10 factories. Um, I've left some dockyards and things, and they're still getting something from trade. But I've also kept the stuff in Chechnya, which is the country I'm going to be releasing to play as. Just for good measure, I'm going to start scorching the earth just around Moscow. Boom. Next up on our list of important things is to make sure we delete all of these divisions. Every single one. Unfortunately, they are going to be left with one division because they need something for uh, garrisons. But, hey, let's make it as terrible as possible. An armoured car <laughs> to width. Now that is the Soviet army complete. This might be a little overkill, but you can also stick their research on completely pointless stuff. Every little helps. And at last we arrive at the focus complete. So we release ourselves. Independent. Oof. Good luck to us. And now we have the option to unite the mountainous republics. The key point is that that specific focus, which is the only way in Iron Man to complete this, automatically releases four nations. One of them is Georgia, and Georgia always gets Abkhazia, and they're a puppet. So, unfortunately, there is no other way to do this in Iron Man Standard Mode, <laughs> in this format. The only other way would be to do it in Conquest, but we'll get to that later. So, we arrive as Chechnya, a little bit later than previously shown, because I had to stop in at the Soviet Union and make sure that they didn't take Restore Cossack units, because that gave them four cavalry divisions. We didn't want that but now we should be good to go. I'm immediately just going to start heading down for my armaments effort straight away. It's also at this point that we can finally deceive the decision form the mountainous republic of the Northern Caucasus. Apparently it was Tapper Tishmoev who made it in order to fight off the Russian invaders. It seems like we'll be doing something very similar all over again. Now what is interesting is that when you release yourself, you release yourself as democratic. But because you've already had a civil war and the world tension is so high, I'm just going to immediately justify on the Soviet Union. Don't worry, Grozny. You'll grow to become big and powerful, just like you always wanted. At least I can pronounce your capital's name. As for the people of North Ossetia, whoever can pronounce that capital name, you deserve to rule Russia. My goodness. With 50 political power, we're taking arm logistics so we can actually build some units. 
and onto Armanent effort. With five army XP, we can design our legendary division. It's one horse called Clive. All right, we'll take seven Clives, maybe eight Clives, and I think that should be enough. Uh oh, I think my justification is done a little too early. Um, if they can just give me a moment, I can get the first horses out. All right, that should be enough for the opening invasion. Two horses, let's head in. So in short, it should just be a pretty good walk from left to right. Because supply is so terrible and they have no org, every time they move into a tile, they actually lose all of their orders. So with, I think, Abkhazia, Kabardino, North Ossetia, Chechnya, and Dagestan's capitals all been taken, we can now unite the mountainous republics. It's as simple as that. We are disunited no more. I don't know why the D in disunited is capitalised, but hey. It's at this point it would be up to you to take the position of spawning as many units as you can with your newfound rising manpower and trying to capitulate the Soviets before they get really mad at you for what you've just done. Fly, my pretties. Fly. Our country's so big you can actually see the name of the country for once. The Mountainous Republic of the Northern Caucasus. And I do believe that's GG. So we've completed this mission while well, letting Tata stand free, because why not? And we've managed to conquer all of Russia. But there is a third way to play the game, something we haven't really addressed. We've tried conquering things by using the individual ones. We've done the method where you conquer all of Russia, but there is a third one. What if you conquer Russia as another party? You can puppet them and create the nation. So starting as Poland, let's imagine through the magical powers of not being an Iron Man, we're going to go to war with Russia. God, I hope this video isn't poorly timed with world politics. For the record, you could do this as any country, I'm just doing this for the purposes of demonstration. We find ourselves heading into somewhat familiar territory. So with the capitulation of the Soviet Union at hand, 98%, let's see what we can do. So let's say we go to satellite Chechnya, and then we give them back all the states they needed, like Dagestan, North Ossetia, Kabardino, Abkhazia, and they also get a core on Sochi. Now, despite the fact that even though they are most certainly a puppet, they can form the mountainous republics. Note that this does only work on non-historical. Uh, historically, they don't like to <laughs> form these nations, but that is an alternative way you could play it. And that technically counts as forming a formable nation. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope this was of some use to you. Um, if you like, well, you know all that usual stuff. So I'll just say um, thank you and Bye. Of all the times to start making YouTube videos about Russia and the war, I'm not sure this is the time.